Good morning. Hi. Um, excited to be with you this morning. Uh, I want to ask you just to stand with me. Let's just prepare our hearts just to worship together. Um, just in one voice today, let's give this, all of these songs just to God. Um, allow him to respond back to us. Just in one voice today as a church. Thank you. 
very special one. We have our community groups being highlighted, so um, that's something that we can all do and be uh, be a part of. So we're going to bring up 
our resident uh, groups guru, uh, Luke Berner, to uh, give us more info about that. Uh, I'm Luke Bergner. I'm kind of filling in for Jake because I don't know if you guys know that they had their baby, which is something to celebrate. You know, that's awesome. Um, but I help serve on the community groups leadership team. And um, so today we're going to give you like a brief introduction to the hosts of the leadership team and also talk a little bit about um, why we think everyone in here should really seek to be in community here. Because um, here at Mission City, we don't want um, church just to be something where you come on Sunday and you praise God and you listen to a sermon, although those things are great. Um, there's just a lot you're missing out on uh, if that's all you're doing. Um, we really think that um, we want people to be alongside you, to walk alongside you in your challenges uh, Monday through Saturday, and also to celebrate your victories uh, Monday through Saturday. Um, and so, um, because really, the, the church is in place. It's a, it's a people. It's all of us. And um, we just want to be there for each other and to love each other as much as possible. So we'll give a brief introduction here. Um, I think we have some PowerPoints into who the hosts are. Um, and we can kind of go over those real quick. Um, first off, we have the Hagers. That's Katie and Brad and then Lil Brooks. They meet on Tuesdays in, yeah, in Lenexa. Um, and so I think they meet bi-weekly at 6 o'clock on Tuesdays. So that is the Hagers. They're here today. All our hosts uh, will be outside in the lobby after service, and you can talk to any one of them. You can talk to me. You can talk to Russell about um, what might be a good fit for you. Um, and so next we have uh, the Kennedys. Uh, yes, they are both here. Uh, they meet on Thursdays in the North Overland Park area. Also, I believe at 6 p.m. Correct me if I'm wrong on anything, but um, yeah, so that's another one. And then we have the Maxis. Uh, it's Brandon and Melissa. They meet in downtown. So if you like to um, get downtown on random nights, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Or uh, if you live down that way, they meet on Wednesdays uh, at 6 p or 6.30 p.m., uh, also bi-weekly. And then next we have the Robinsons. Um, they meet on Sundays bi-weekly at 5 p.m., and they're really close to church here. Um, so if you live in this mission, Maria, Maria, they're a great fit for you. And then lastly, we have the Bakers. They also meet on Sundays, but they meet out west in Shawnee. So it might be a little bit of a drive. If you don't want to go back and forth, you can meet with the Bakers on Sundays. So, um, yep, those are all our hosts. Like I said at the end of service today, if you want to talk to any of them, get more information about when they meet, what they do in those meetings, uh, you can talk to me or Russell or any of those hosts as well. Um, we want all of you to be connected. We want all of you to have people here at church that you can walk through life's challenges and victories with. And, uh, yeah, so with that, I guess I'll be with Russell. We're back to Ryan. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Um, so, just normal announcements. So we've got, uh, uh, up here we'll have the uh, QR code um, where you can fill out your Connect card. So first time people, if you want more information, uh, we try not to bother you too much just to help get you connected. And then uh, if you do come regularly, we would love if you filled it out for us every week. It's, it's helpful to us in shepherding and, and just knowing who's around. Um, and then on there, on, it'll take you to our website, which also allows you to give or uh, just look at all of our events and our calendar. So a lot of information on that. Um, but yeah, I'll give it up to Russell, and he'll finish out our uh, community series. And uh, yeah, that'll be it. So thanks for being here. Probably. Here it is. Good morning. I, uh, I realized I was talking to jo Josh this morning about how I haven't preached in like three weeks. Took me down just a smidge, Alex. And I was like, I don't know if it's like riding a bike. We'll see how this goes this morning. But it'll be a good time. Uh, if you haven't met me, my name's Russell. I'm the lead pastor at Mission City, uh, which we're super glad that you're here. Uh, our vision at Mission City is a community that makes Jesus known. And so we've been in a series over the last uh, about four weeks looking at community. Like, what does it look like? For what does biblical community look like? And then also today we'll talk about what does it look like for us, very practically, honestly. And so we're not going to, it should be too much of a deep dive today. It should be more of a, all right, so I'm interested in a group. And then also ideally, what do those groups look like as well? Jake has been teaching this series because he is our community groups and creative director. Uh, and so, but uh, I, I gave him the Sunday off because I just had a baby on Tuesday or Wednesday. I figured that's 
just a kind thing to do. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we were playing it all, all along. He's like, you sure? I was like, you sure you want to preach all these, like right around the baby being due? He's like, yeah, it'll be fine. The Lord will work it out. And he did. So look at us. But we're excited for Jake and Sarah, and uh, they'll be back some, uh, some, sometime in the near future as well. So, But week one of the series, we, we looked at Genesis chapter one through three, and we basically established this idea that like, as human beings, like we're not intended to be alone. Like you were, uh, God said when he created man that he, it's, he, 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 there was not a suitable person or, or helper for him, and so he ended up creating woman. And so even in that, like needing, a, like a, the need for one another was created uh, in the creation stories. Well, we need people, not just relationships. I mean, just in a very simple way, if you take two babies and one baby you hold and nurture, and one baby you don't help, you like withhold uh, like nurturing and also just physical touch, uh, just the development of that child will be uh, d distinctly different. Like the, the one that is not held, nurtured, will be distinctly, uh, it'll take them longer to develop as a, as, a, as a human being, just simple tasks and things like that. And so we, it's built into us as human beings that we need people, even, even the most introverted person in the world has a, a need for connection. Maybe not as much connection, as our extroverted people, but we still need people as well. And then week two, uh, we we looked at this God calling Abraham and basically calling the people of Israel, and he called them in Genesis 12 to be a blessing, that he's going to create this family of blessing. And that's that's what our hope is for our community groups, is not just our community groups, but for our, our churches, that we would be a family, a body of believers that is a blessing to one another, but also to the world, to our city, to our neighbors, to our family, to our friends, to all of those different people as well. Uh, and then week three, uh, we talked about how uh, it is in Christ that unifies us. It's the blood of Jesus and then in the new life of his resurrection that unites us because if you are a follower of Jesus, if you put your faith in Christ, that you are in him, that you're buried in him in death and that you are raised to new life in him, which makes you a part of his family, which breaks down uh, socioeconomic. So that's a hard word, socioeconomic uh, barriers, it breaks down racial barriers, ethnic barriers, it breaks down all barriers that there is this one big family of God that we can, we, that we are united in him as well. And so, and, and, and then we also focused on, uh, sorry, week two, I forgot to say this, so, so what does it look like to be a blessing? Uh, our coffee mug uh, verse that we, 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 you can hang your hat on or you can memorize this. It's also, uh, Maisie's in school and she goes to Kansas City Christian and she memorizes these verses every single week, and I'm like, you're going to know more verses than I do in, like, three weeks, <laughs> and I'm a pastor, because now I have my phone, and I've stopped memorizing it. Like, when I was growing up in discipleship groups, people would be like, write it on a, on a note card. I'd be like, why would I memorize a verse? I have it on my phone. I have it all the time. What are you talking about? But she literally quotes it all the time. But you, if you want to memorize a verse, it's a good one. So this, is a, this is a coffee mug verse or a bumper sugar verse. Here it is, Micah 6 a. He has told you, oh, man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? What This is what being a blessing looks like. To do what? To do justice, to love kindness. I think in Jake's translation, he uses good. Uh, or the, he didn't translate the Bible himself, by the way. The translation that he was quoting said good. And then to walk humbly with your God. So if we're going to be a blessing to others, we're going to have to be people of justice. When we see things that are wrong, we need to call it out and, and seek to find the right thing, the, ju the just thing. If we, we need to love kindness, we need to love what is good. Uh, and then we need to walk with, with, with God. And we can agree to do that, as not just as separate individuals, but the collective of Mission City and hopefully the collective of the church in Kansas City and then ultimately the, the collective of the global church would do those things. Uh, and in that, we would be a blessing to the nations. And not so that they would praise you, but that, so that they would praise our Heavenly Father uh, would be the goal. So the goal of today, again, is we're going to ask this question, is what does the community look like in Mission City? What, is it, what does it look like? And to do that, we're going to look in Acts chapter 2, which if you've been at any church uh, for any period of time, and they did a community series, or they talked about what the church should look like, or they talked about unity, or they talked about whatever it is, you probably heard a sermon on Acts chapter 2, and you get to hear another one. God bless you. Um, and we're going to look at that today, but we're going to, we're going to start with Acts chapter 2, and then we're going to talk about what are the goals of our 
what are, what are the goals of our community group? So what is the target? If we say, hey, this is, if, what, what are you aiming for? If I join one of these groups, what is the goal for me when I join this group? What is the goal for all of the groups that we have? And so I'm gonna read through the whole passage uh, together, uh, read through the whole passage, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit as well. So Acts chapter two, verse 42 says this, he says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wondered, wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings uh, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had, had, need, had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And so what kind of community will we be? And so we're going to be kind of using... Uh, verse 42 is kind of a, a, a way or an outline for us to define what kind of communities we're, we're going to have. And so if you look at that, the, they devoted themselves to a few things. You see you see in the verse, if you don't know, uh, you can go to the next one. They're underlined for you, so just to help you out. Uh, but what did they devote themselves to? Four things, right? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So what does devotion mean? It's, it's to love, loyalty, or enthusiasm for a person, activity, or a cause. And so it's, it's loyalty, love, and enthusiasm for apostles' teaching, for fellowship, for breaking of bread, and to prayer, which is great. And so we'll, we'll break those four things down, and then we'll talk about very practically what we're asking for you. And I'll, I'll just tell you this straight up. We, we, we desire for all of you to live in community, to live in community with uh, one another. Now, you might say, well, I have a tight community that I'm a part of. That's fine. Like, some, sometimes people uh, sometimes people need community in the church. Sometimes they don't. Like, if you have a tight group of people that you're already existing and living, to like, doing this and living this out, fine. Go for it. That's great. But if you don't, or if you're looking for one, or if you want to do it in this body, please do so as well. And I promise, I got Jake's permission to say that, by the way. Just so you know. So it's not like... I'm not the community groups director, and so I'm saying, don't worry about community groups. No, join a community group, because I would bet most of, you, most of you need to find this. But again, some of us, with how busy life is and the margin that we don't have, it's like, no, I have these people that I check in on, and we do these four things together. So that's a little caveat. So anyway, all right, so first one, apostles' teaching. So we, we, we just say this a little bit differently, apostles' teaching, we just call it, we just call it spiritual growth. So one of the main goals of community groups uh, is to devote ourselves to the apostles' teachings, which was the Jesus' teaching, which ultimately will lead to spiritual growth. In verse 43, just to remind you, everyone was filled with awe and, 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 and at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And so this was just basically reiterating the fact that they were, they were engaged in what the apostles were doing, not just the miraculous things that God was doing at the uh, around the apostles, but also this, this incredible thing is that they would get up and speak. And at this point, this is Acts 2, right? So Peter would speak and thousands of people would respond and believe that, that, that Jesus is the Christ and that he died and was risen again. They didn't also didn't have to really believe it. They probably just saw it, so it was easier to believe in that way, but that's, a, that's an aside for other ways. But, but what does it look like for spiritual growth in our lives, right? So in community groups, very practically, what does that mean? It's like we're, we're probably going to talk about, have spiritual conversations. We're gonna talk about the, the things that are in the scriptures. Uh, we're gonna talk about what does it look like to practice following Jesus, or if you're a big John Mark Comer fan, is practicing the way of Jesus. And his big thing is, it, it, it might talk about, like, what does it look like to be with Jesus? Like, are you regularly spending time with Jesus? What does it look like to become like Jesus? Where not just are you you're, 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 you're spending time with him, but your actions are beginning to change or your, your, your heart and mind are beginning to change. And then what does it look like to do what Jesus did? Uh, this could happen in, um, in your community group. This could also teaching can happen as well. Uh, some groups will choose to go through like a, a book of the Bible. Some groups will choose to go through maybe a book that they want to study together or a topic they want to study together. Some groups might decide to do like a sermon, com a conversation around the previous sermon. But there, there will be an aspect of spiritual growth that will happen in these communities as well. So you get spiritual growth or they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. The second one uh, is this word fellowship. 
Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna call this word connection is, is the goal. So the first goal is to, for spiritual growth, is that we want you to come to community group and that you would grow. That you would, if you were in a community group for nine months, that you would not be the same follower of Jesus that you were before. If you're not a follower of Jesus, maybe you come to know him in one of these groups as well. The second thing would be connection. And, uh, and, and we're connecting to this word fellowship. Now, how many of you grew up in church? Can you just show of hands if you grew up in church, right? How many of you at your church, you had uh, something called a fellowship hall? Anyone have a fellowship hall? Yes. Yeah, so I did too, which is great. There's, there's, the only thing you really did in fellowship halls was have church potlucks. I don't know. Is that true for you guys? Like, because you weren't allowed to dance in them, at least in my church, because I grew up in the South. And, and you could play too loud of music. And it was always just like my random cousin's or nephew's wedding that we'd go to the fellowship hall, and there'd just be this spread of, again, I'm from the South, so casseroles, which were essentially a vegetable cream of mushroom soup and some kind of cheese and some type of crunchy wafer over the top. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, like, what, so when I say the word fellowship, uh, and so you either go, oh, fellowship ball, that's, I, that's, I don't know what that is, that's, that's, that's kind of old school, or you just go straight Lord of the Rings, right? Like, I don't know what a fellow, <laughs> I don't know what fellowship is, but I know I like the movie with the hobbits, you know what I mean? Like, that could be it, but, but what is this word fellowship? And now, if you grew up in a maybe more traditional church, you might have heard a sermon on fellowship, but what is the word fellowship? So in Greek, it's this word koinonia. So you guys want to try that one? That's a fun, that's a fun, usually I don't let, make you try them. But this is a fun one, okay? Koinonia, you want to try it? Koinonia. That's pretty good, koinonia. Yeah, there you go. So it means fellowship. Now, what does it mean? So 44 and 45, it says, All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold a property and possessions to give to anyone who, who had a need. So koinonia is this. Uh, the Bible Project defines it this way. They say fellowship is shared participation within a community. It's, it's, it's sharing in is, is basically a very simple way to say it. What does quantity mean? means we share in something together, which makes sense. If, if now the light bulb is coming off for the Fellowship of the Rings, you're like, oh my gosh, I know what that means now. It's amazing. If you're like, Russell, you're an idiot. I knew that the whole time. It's okay. But what are we sharing in? So there's two, there's two like kind of avenues that we share. So to collectively, there's a fellowship of believers that are, and, and we share in the things of Christ, so this is an upward sharing, right? So we participate uh, in the relationship with the Father, Son, and the Spirit uh, because we have fellowship with God, because we are adopted sons and daughters and we get to be a part of uh, His family. We get to share in the, the things that Christ has provided for us, meaning that like we get to share in uh, forgiveness of our sin, and we get to share in the new creation or the newness of life, being born again is the old way of saying it. Uh, and that is found in Jesus' death and his resurrection, and you share in that, and that's a common thing that you share in if you said, hey, I put my faith in Jesus in, and I'm a new person because of Christ. Uh, and there also is, is a, a horizontal or two the other body of believers that you and I share in a deep connection because of Christ. Uh, John Piper is a famous pastor. He says it this way. He says, Fellowship is a mutual bond that Christians have with Christ that puts us in deep, eternal relationship with one another. And it's, it's really simply this. It's like, it's why if you've ever had the chance to travel the world and do things like for the church or to extend the kingdom of God around the world, if you ever had an opportunity to do that and you've met fellow believers, you, and there's this close bond that connects you because you together are in Christ. Sharing a vertically in the union, uh, each of us having Christ, and sharing together with other believers the common union that we have with Christ and each other. We get to share. We get to share in it. And I do think sometimes, like we miss this. I, I, I do think we miss. There's there's a whole like if you really want to do a deep dive, like there's this whole theology or this whole systematic theology around this idea of unity in Christ. And I, I do think, like, in, at least in the Western church, we really focus on this upward relationship. And it's not even this upper relationship, like a corporate upper relationship. It's more of an individual because we I always talked about my personal relationship with Jesus. Like, do you want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, which is nothing wrong with that? 
I absolutely have a personal relationship with Jesus, and it's fantastic, and I connect with God on an individual level, but there's something that we get to share in as a fellowship together, and that is so good that we all have, and we, we know the things, like, hey, I'm forgiven, I've been made new, I have all of these different things, but we forget that that also allows us to be not only accountable to the other, like, the rest of the body, but we also, like, we get to share in it. I, I think about it like this. Um, Anyone, anyone familiar with attachment styles, like of people? I'm, I'm sure Hannah, Hannah makes this, but um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> she she works in counseling, something like that. that's why. But I, I, I might be remiss, remiss, remembering wrong, but I remember being an undergrad at the University of Georgia. I remember sitting in one of my classes. We talked about attachment styles, and it all clicked for me. And I don't remember the names of the different types of attachment styles, but they're different ones. And I remember like they related it to kids jumping into a pool and kids that jump in from the diving board and, and versus like how you interact, right? So uh, if you, when you were a kid, when you were a younger kid and you saw a diving board, how many of you just ran straight? Like you waited in line, waited for your turn, but you jumped off the diving board like, like, a, like a maniac, yeah? Like pretty normal, right? You probably have normal attachment, good for you, congratulations. Uh, I don't think I don't remember the next the rest of them. Some, some other kids would just like, just radically just jump in, wouldn't wait for anything. Anyone do that? Like, wouldn't even wait in line? Like, wouldn't even use the board. Just jump in. Do a gainer off the side, right? There's a couple of you. Well, then there's us that aren't really, um, let's see, we don't believe that this is a safe thing. You know what I mean? And so what we do instead is we pace around the whole edge of the board, right? And we might, like, dip our toe in, but I'm not jumping in yet until I've evaluated to make sure this is a safe environment for me to exist in. And, and then like maybe you like sit on the edge and put your toes in, or your whole feet in, you get your ankles in. And then like maybe after enough convincing, like I will jump in, because I've noticed that 17 kids have jumped. It took them about five seconds. I can swim for about five seconds to the, the wall. And I know I can make it. And then I'm finally going to jump in. So with us in community, you're right, that's a horrible illustration, I don't understand. You can talk to me about it another time. Or never talk to me about it again, it's okay. But what happens with us in, in, with community is a lot of times is we don't really jump into them. Like we're, we're, we, and I actually think more often than not, because it could be because of how technology has influenced our culture. It could be because recently even more, you can blame on COVID if you want to, but we don't necessarily just jump in or dive into community, like ready to share into things with like share in, in share life with one another. Like we're just not ready to. Like, yeah, I got the upward one, but the, the with others thing, like we're not always willing just to dive off the board or to be like Israel and just do a gainer off the side of the pool, <laughs> right? Instead, we're like, ah, I'm not sure if that works for my schedule. Like, let me test it out for a little bit. Oh, and then like, or we do the, um, if you do this, I really, I'm not making fun of you, but I'm making fun of you. Um, you know the people, like, when you ask them, like, hey, are you busy on Friday? And they're like, maybe. And it's like, they're not, Josh, you think you did this to me a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Just kidding. But they're like, maybe. And it's not because they're, they are free. They actually are 100% free. So it's not that. It's just that they're waiting to see if there's something better. Do you do, raise your hand, close your eyes. I'm just kidding. Raise your hand if you've never done that before. Liars. But, but anyway, but we do that with community, though. We do that with community. I really think we do that with community. I really think that we, it could be either we don't know how to do it. We don't realize that we share in these deeper, like, we have access to this deep eternal relationship with one another because, like, we, because we are in Christ. And, uh, and so for me, I, I, I really hope over this next year, this next season of community groups, that we would tap into the fact that, yeah, like Christ has done something we did, we're in him. But at the same time, that, that means that you and I have deep, eternal relationships with one another, the people that are sitting to your left and to your right, if they're in Christ. So that's, that's fellowship, that's koinonia, that's what we are gonna call connection. So uh, there's four goals for community groups, there's spiritual growth, there's connection. The fourth one, uh, I would call, they, they call it breaking of bread. <laughs> Talk about eat, the goal is to eat, Count me in. Let's go. Where, sign me up. I'm right now. Right? But we'll call this deep, deep relationships. For, for 46 and 47 says this. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God, and this is, this is it, enjoying the favor of all people. 
So they had, they received favor from all people, but also they just enjoyed one another. And um, and you might you might wonder like how are you connecting deep relationship with breaking your bread? And this is wise because who do you actually spend a meal with? When you think about it, like if you're gonna invite someone to lunch, like typically you invite someone that you're close with, right? Typically you invite someone that you know, that you have connection with. And like sometimes, yeah, I'll invite someone new, and that, but it's a stretch and I have anxiety or I feel a little tension on the way. And I, not, like I feel that way too, just so you know. But, but, but we typically share meals with people we are close with. And so we desire for these community groups that are probably going to last at, at the start for about nine months and they can go on longer, but you know, the commitment it will be for now until the end of the school year is that we desire for you to have deep relationships. And then we hope that you have deep relationships with one another. And Jesus modeled this, that he spent time around a table. And yes, at most community groups, if not all, there will be breaking of some type of bread or, or, or food. But like, there is this common bond that when we share a meal together that it opens our hearts and minds up to connect with other people. And hopefully, because we have this fellowship, this koinonia with one another, that we can have deep relations. It'll open up, can, uh, it'll open up connection ways so that we will have deeper uh, relationships. And then finally, this is also going back to 47. Uh, the last one is, 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 is prayer, which is praising God or for the glory of God, right? They were praising God. They were enjoying the favor of all people. So ultimately, our community group goals at Mission City, this is our hope, is that you would grow spiritually, is that you would connect with one another, that you would share in the things of Christ together because he has purchased you and brought you back to life, that you would establish deep relationships around the table, and that it would be all for the glory of God. That's the goal of community group. So very practically, we have five that you just saw, two of them meet on Sunday nights. Uh, then you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They're not all going to be always on the same weeks. And so all of our community group leaders will be out in the lobby and would love to meet you, to talk to you. Uh, and, and I would encourage you, again, like the, the, the first thing that we're going to ask is, is, is this, is that, that, that you would consider joining one of these things if you're not already a part of one. Uh, and that, that if you do end up joining one, that you would devote yourself in that, for that season that you're a part of it, to spiritual growth, to connection, to deep relationships for the glory of God. And so, and, and then to get even more specific, what are we asking? Like, what am I asking you today as a lead pastor? I'm asking you to join a group. Again, I've already said this, but the only exception is this. If you're already doing this, like if you already have a community, like I, I, I don't actually know if they're here today, but I know there is a couple of couples that they have a community group that already exists and they're already growing, and they're already connected, and they're already experiencing deep relationships. It's like, I'm not going to ask you to have four community groups because you already have this existing in your life, right? But if you don't, or you're looking for one, or maybe you already have groups, but you don't have this type of community, you don't have this type of spiritual growth, we're going to encourage you, we're going to ask you, we're not going to beg you, but we're going to push you to do this, to, to join a group, because you're not meant to walk alone. We're called to be a blessing together. And we, we want you to grow in these ways. And then in your groups, we're going to ask you to prioritize your meeting. Like, put it on your calendar. I don't know about you, but if I don't put things on my calendar, someone told me this when I was like 25, and I was like, dude, I don't need a calendar. I'm fine, right? Now, if I don't put it on my Google calendar, it will not happen. All of you know this. I say, hey, let's meet. And they're like, and, then, and I say this to you, hey, you want to hang out? Let's meet. Let's do it. And if we don't set that meeting or we don't put it on my calendar, it will never happen. And you know it because you're laughing at me right now. <laughs> Okay, uh, but yeah, don't be like, and then also don't be like the, the don't be, sorry, millennials, I'm a millennial too, I, I, I'm a millennial too, right? <laughs> but don't be the millennial that says, I'll, I might be there. Don't be that guy. And then when something better happens, you, you, you put something else there, right? Uh, here's the second thing we're asked, that you will be open and honest in conversations. Like that you, again, you're devoting yourself to this group of people for a season that you'll show respect and compassion to my fellow group members. And, and if you don't know how to, to do that, like ask someone to help you. Like sometimes I have a hard time showing compassion. Uh, it's just, I don't know, I'm very, whatever, black and white, I'm very this way, and I have a hard time, I, I have a hard time showing empathy sometimes. Um, or emoting and shush. Like I might feel it internally, but I don't know how to show it externally. So if you need help with that, you can actually be vulnerable and share that with your group. Uh, I will pray for and meet the physical needs of those in my community when possible. This is the coin of the I'm going to, 
I'm gonna, like we are one. It's acknowledging that we are one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a part of it. I'm gonna share in this together. Acknowledge I'm not just an isolated individual on my own path, but we together are in Christ. And I'm willing to be held accountable to these things and commit uh, these commitments by the other members of the group. Like meaning, if you don't do one of these things, then they might call you out. And that's okay. Like accountability is a great thing because it causes us to grow. Um, now, if that scares you, which it might, that's okay. Or if you're not willing to commit to that certain level, it's okay. You can still come. You just, just let the group know like, kind of where, where your heart's at. But, but we believe, like, if you engage in this level, that we believe that you'll, you'll grow spiritually, that you'll find these connections, and you'll share in Christ together, and that you will have these deep relationships, uh, and that, that it will be for the glory of God. It will lift God's name higher as well. Two final thoughts. I'm going to invite the band to come back up. Is this. So community groups, it's in our vision, right? Like we intentionally picked the word community when we started Mission City a couple years ago. It's in our vision. It's a cornerstone of our vision. But it's also a place for us to um, practice, like practice this well. And it, so that, like, when we're away from our community groups, we can do this as well. Like that you would just practice community only on these nights every other week. But it'd be something, a part of your life, that, that we, it's a word that we use around here a lot called hospitality. And our hope is, is to be a community, again, not just isolated individuals, but a community, like a group of people who share together in the good things of Christ and in deep relationships with one another. And so I think if we're going to do this, though, I think just a couple things uh, to, to remember is this, is that you're not... Uh, you're not going to community group to be entertained. You, the, that one's a tough one sometimes because it's like, I just didn't like it. It wasn't good for me. Well, you're not going to be entertained. You're going for spiritual growth, connection, deep relationships to glorify God. That's what, that's what we're, we're doing as well. And I think um, if you, you know when you go in expecting it to be a certain way and it's not, you get very disappointed? Has that ever happened to you? Anyone like a big expectation guy? Like for me, if I have an expectation for something and it doesn't happen the way that I've been expecting it, Cassie can tell you this, I become like a five-year-old child. <laughs> I shut down. Now, I'll give you a funny example. Um, I've always wanted to like Bloody Marys. Uh, now, this might be a weird thing to say, and if you don't drink, that's okay. Like, we're, we're for that too, but I, I've always wanted to because they just look so much fun. You know what I mean, though? Like, don't they look fun? Like, because they have all that stuff on them. You know what I mean? I like food, okay? Like, I just like food. And this is a silly example, I know, but I've always wanted to. And, uh, and, and not even for the drink, I just want to eat, like, they have bacon and stuff on it, and cheese. Like, who doesn't want to eat bacon and cheese, right? And so, but anytime I, like, my mom likes them, and so anytime I'd like, oh, I want to try that, it looks so good, and I'd take a sip of it, it's disgusting. I don't, like, the tomato juice is just disgusting. Like, even if it's just tomato juice and bacon and cheese, right? Take the alcohol, it's just gross. And, uh, but I was always confused why I didn't like Bloody Marys, because I love salsa so much. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, what's, what's salsa? This, and this might ruin Bloody Marys for some of you, I'm sorry. But I love salsa, and, uh, and so this is, what, this is what I had to do. And this is a really silly example, but I had to reframe a Bloody Mary in my mind, because I was hoping it to be like, I was thinking, it's a drink. In my mind, all drinks are refreshing. Like, there's no, no doubt about it. Water, refreshing, right? Cold, cold drink, refreshing. Coca Cola, refreshing. All these different things. Uh, also, right now, this is a side note. I'm really on Topo Chico's Twist of Lime Mineral Waters. Refreshing is a mess. You can't find them anywhere because they're so stinking popular. But incredibly refreshing, by the way. And so I had to reframe this in my mind, though. <laughs> this is a weird aside. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is weird, right? Instead of thinking of it as like a refreshing beverage, I was like, oh no, I'm just drinking a cup of salsa with bacon and cheese on side. <laughs> and, and then I did that, and I was like, you know what? I like to drink salsa, it's good. <laughs> Some, <laughs> I know, it's really weird. But for community, the, the, this, that's silly, but the reality is though, for some of us, we have, we have misunderstood what community groups are about. We think they're about us being entertained. You can even go as far as to say that, that that's the same thing with church. And we think that church, like I will pick my church or I'll pick where I worship or whatever it is or how I engage on the entertainment factor of it. And that is not the point of your community group. It's not. 
the point of the goal of community group is for us to is to what? Spiritual growth, connection, deep relationships, to glorify God. That's the goal of community groups. That's what it's for. And so instead of thinking of, well, I didn't like it because I wasn't entertained or I didn't like the food or I wasn't impressed or the house wasn't clean enough, like, it's not good. No, community groups, think about it like this way for us, is are about us receiving and practicing hospitality with one another. Is that, that if you're going to be a member of a community group, if you're going to be a member of this, like, don't show up to be entertained. Don't assume, it's, it's actually a group of hosts and guests, meaning if you're a hosting a community group, you're a host, but you're also a guest because there's other people in that group that are, are trying to host and to practice hospitality with you. So if you show up to someone's house, you're not only a guest in that house, you need to think like a host of that house so that you can be hospitable to every single person in that group. And then lastly is this, is that hopefully as we learn to practice these things, and as we learn to practice hospitality, this is a huge aspect of community groups, is that we would practice them not just at the table of our community group every other week or every week, however often it means, but we would practice at tables with our coworkers, with our friends, with our family, that our hospitality, our kindness, our, our care for people would go beyond just those meetings. And so we invite you to join them. And it, it is a little, it's a higher call than it was maybe a year ago. It's a higher push than it was a year ago. Well, we believe, we believe that this is where God is calling our groups to go to, and we also believe that, that it will benefit us. It'll benefit us that we will grow as a community and that we will be a blessing who, who loves justice, who loves kindness, and who walks home with our God. So we, we want to invite you to these communities. We want to invite you to spiritual growth. We want to invite you to connection, to deep relationships, all for the glory of God. Would you pray with me? So, Lord Jesus, I just pray so much that, that you would just lead us. God, if people are here and they need to be a part of a community group, that they would, uh, that they would do so. And God, I pray that some of the expectations, that might, that might scare some of us. And I, I pray, God, that wouldn't be a hindrance, God, but it would just be, it would be something that we allow ourselves to commit to so that we can experience the fullness of, of you, God. A part of being in Christ is experiencing the joy of being in Christ, the, the brothers and sisters that we are part of this giant family that belongs to you. And so, God, we ask you to move in this next time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, as we end today, we always end in a time of response. We're going to sing a couple songs together. There's also communi communion down front as well. The reason that we can share in Christ, the reason that we, we are in Christ is because Christ left heaven and he lived and he died. And, and, and as we celebrate communion, we're remembering the fact that his body was broken and his blood was shed to make a way so that we could be in him. And so when you take that, it, it, during the next two songs, we're going to invite you to come down and grab uh, some juice and a, and a cracker and so that you can remember that. As we, as we get to share in that together, that the koinonia, the koinonia with them. There will also be a prayer team, uh, people on each side that would love to pray with you. If you have something that God has put on your heart that, that you don't want to walk alone with, that you want someone to pray along with you, we invite you to come down and uh, be prayed over. So Lord Jesus, move in next, next time. We love you so much. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
God, we love you. Um, we just thank you for today and all that you've shown us, God. Um, I pray that our hearts can just connect with what community means and what our heart here at Mission City um, is towards community, God. Just maybe connect towards that. Maybe that as we maybe choose a group, God, that as we can start to pray um, just for those groups and the connection there and the growth there and the love. Um, we love you, God, and just thank you for your blessings. In your name, amen. Thanks again, you guys, for being here this morning. Um, and yeah, just one last plug. We, we really desire for you guys to all have community here. Um, I know Russell and Jake and our whole leadership team, we talk about it, and it makes us emotional, like thinking about people coming and not feeling a part of what we do here. So um, yeah, if, you're, if you don't have a group, go talk to somebody. Everybody's really nice. Out the out there, so pretty nice, I guess. Um, but uh, we really do. We really care about you. We want you to have community here. Um, and yeah, over the last few weeks, we've been uh, emphasizing that, obviously. And then, uh, yeah, and a great way to do that as well is through serving. So not to throw too much at you, but we've highlighted some ministries, and we'd love to have you in that way as well. So have a good Sunday. Uh, thanks for being here so much, and uh, go Chiefs.